Amen. Well, we all know that that when you give purposely like this, that it really does have the capacity to shift things, to open things. And like you said, to re actually release the anointing to see. It kind of goes along with what you were calling the, the lookout watchman. Uh, Absolutely. Being able to see in a different way. Um, talk, talk, I know you talked about it a little bit, but let's, can we talk about that a little bit more? I feel like this is, uh, just this last week I preached on the, uh, you know, the, a call to the watchman. And I do feel like there's a whole new wind that's coming over the watchman. Yeah, totally. Movement totally. And the ability uh, to see into the future. So talk about that a little bit more. We've got to position? know that there is a place that God is calling his watchman to. Now watchman, that's one of the types of prophets we are, right. but the watchman in corpus intercession. That's why you've always had this watchman conference. It incorporates intercession in with it, and we're looking at the word, so we watch after the word, and it comes into fullness. Now, that, that's it in a nutshell with a watchman. And uh, I was reading through, uh, first of all, I, uh, as I shared, I went back and read the uh, first and second Kings and first and second Chronicles, and I saw how God how the prophet and the king and the watchman all would interact together. Right. And when I was reading the book of Isaiah, I got to Isaiah uh, 21, and it talks about call for a, a watchman. Call the watchman and tell them to come forth. Call them onto their lookout. Mm, so so that they can announce better what's happening. That's where I really feel like the watchmen are this year. We're on a lookout. We are, uh, my family, of course, you know, a uh, portion of my family were first people and they, they, they knew how to go to a lookout and peer to see where the enemy was coming from. And that watchman anointing, I went through the book of Isaiah and he, the Lord said, started prophesying through Isaiah, come let us reason together. Come, let us talk about where you're real, how you're really thinking about things. And then remember, it became a political crisis because in the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah saw the Lord. I think, I think we're in a political crisis yeah. right now. Yeah. I think we've been in that over the last uh, year uh, that it's been one of the crises. And so it then talks about anointing your shield for the future. I'm decreeing that we are being anointed. Our faith shield is being anointed in a new way. This causes you to see from a perspective of faith, not from the perspective of your emotional crisis that you're having to deal with. And part of that message explains some of that. And then it talks about watch for what is happening to produce your highway for the future. That was one of the things you remember as I shared on that message that if you just looked out your window, you saw three inches of ice, six inches of snow, and your neighborhood was immobilized. Yeah. Where I knew we had to go past our neighborhood to get to the building. And all of a sudden, when I saw the thoroughfare, they have this new brine solution. The thoroughfare, the interstate was open. Wow. But there was no one on it because they couldn't get past the perspective of their neighborhood. Wow. Now, I this watchman anointing is bringing us, this lookout watchman is bringing us into a higher perspective. And God is saying, I am ready for you to come into this new, new anointing that will break the yoke. And the only way you're going to do it is come into a new place, look out see from my perspective and then start decreeing what you're seeing. Wow. That's how the watchman anointing really works. Now you, you began and you just mentioned it a minute ago about this time of crisis we've been in. And I know that the, the Chinese word for crisis is actually uh, marrying together two words, the word danger and opportunity. What do you really feel like are some of the opportunities that God has for his people and for the church in the coming days. I mean, I, I really feel like this crisis is going to break open a whole new realm of opportunities 
uh, uh, I on. agree 100%. And that's why I'm looking at the multiplication factor that's coming from the crisis. I'm actually, I just was having a discussion on the gold standard this morning and how the ramifications of that. Passover prophecies does talk about some of that. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, I've got that book, A Time to Prosper, that more of an outline of how we prosper. But what I'm seeing is this. In the midst of the crisis we're in, you can operate out of fear or you can operate from cautious faith. This brings it into uh, the Chinese and the Hebrew have a lot of a similar understanding. And the, the, you can either have a cautious faith because, see, fear is going to make you unsound. But fear as an emotion from God can cause you to be very cautious as you advance through the dangers into the opportunity. And that's what God's really telling us all. Don't let your fear make you unsound in your thought processes. That's what a spirit of fear does. It makes you unsound in all your ways. It makes you double-minded where God is causing us to be cautious because he's going to bring us through into this new place of explosive faith. No, that, that is so exciting. And I hope that people... Uh, out there. I hope that you're actually really grabbing onto this. Uh, you may want to uh, get this particular message and just listen to it over and over again. There's so much here to digest. Um, uh, you also talked about really one of my favorite um, Hebraic moments, and that is uh, Purim, which is called uh, the holiday of reversals or the time of reversals. Yeah. Um, and we have just watched year after year God bring tremendous turnarounds and God bring tremendous divine reversals, healings, legal situations, family situations, on and on. Are you sensing anything particularly about this particular year? I really I am. I feel like I, it's very I, important. I, I know that. Matter of fact, that's what we're calling our Purim celebration where the we have what's called here Illuminate. We have about 400 students here with younger. We work with the community to bring and teach the arts here. And they're going to present their Purim play on uh, Saturday night. And it's talking about a divine reversal. Purim, why it becomes so important is in this era of pay that we're in, from a Hebrew standpoint, these 10 years, we're talking about God blowing his voice in. We're talking about our voice being activated. But three pay words are also Purim, Passover, and Pentecost. Mm. Therefore, you're going to have to watch the timing of each one of these feasts for what God's going to be doing in you personally and in the group you're with and with the city you're part of and with the nation you're part of. I know we have other people from other nations.